beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Let's stretch our hands and just bless the worship team for such a phenomenal, phenomenal ministration. Just stretch your hands towards them. Lord, bless them. The Bible says, he that waters shall be watered himself. Is someone blessing them? Bless them from the depth of your heart. Lord, it is from glory to glory, from grace to grace. Increase their ministries, multiply them, prosper them as they serve. Let the nations see you revealed in their lives. May they be so greatly rewarded for serving you. In the name of Jesus. Now pray for yourself tonight. I have come to receive. I open up my heart to receive. Someone pray. have come to receive even by the Spirit hallelujah in the name of Jesus All right while standing I want us to just pray together um, we declared a fast today and I presume that everyone followed. We had two prayer points and I want us to just pray those prayer points into our spirits. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. We are still standing. Acts 4, 31. The Bible says, and when they had prayed, not before, not during, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And the Bible says they were all. How many? All. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. We're praying that the Lord will increase our capacity. Hallelujah. The problem with the woman who was in debt was not the availability of the oil, it was the size of the vessel. Hallelujah. And the prophet gave her a recommendation. He said, the oil will always reflect your capacity. He says, go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. Hallelujah. Jude 1 and 20 says, but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost so as we engage in effectual prayer we're expanding our capacity capacity to receive capacity to deliver are you ready to pray say after me in the name of Jesus louder in the name of Jesus I contend for greater capacity 
and higher levels of spiritual power as I submit myself to fervent, effectual prayer. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, as I submit myself to prayer, let there be an enlargement in my spirit. Someone pray. An enlargement, an enlargement, an enlargement. Increase in capacity. The Bible says the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much. Are you praying? I contend for greater capacity, higher levels of power, higher levels of unction, higher levels of grace. Grace can be multiplied, peace can be multiplied, men can expand from within their spirit. Capacity in the spirit. Capacity in the spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. When you place a cup, on a table like this and you decide to pour one drum of water into that cup you are going to waste every other thing that you have poured in minus the size of the cup am i right on that yes the moment the cup gets filled every other thing you are pouring will be a waste hallelujah yes so if you want to receive the more and like you'll be learning there are many things that cannot be captured in your life except and unless on the strength of your capacity. God cannot trust you with certain instructions. God cannot trust you with certain dimensions. God cannot even trust you with men until this wonderful structure that we're in right now, if the architects would tell you the size of the foundation, the foundation was so constructed to be able to receive this size. Am I right on that? Now, there are times that architects have made mistakes for whatever reason, and they did not pay attention to the foundation, and they kept adding structures on a foundation that was not supposed to host that kind of building. And as a result, you will find out that regardless what they did, as far as the quality of the construction is concerned, it will eventually collapse. God trust me with higher levels of wealth, higher levels of grace. That cannot happen except and unless you build capacity. We are going to pray one more time. This prayer holds the key to many people's desire. It's not like God does not want to reach down to you, but your capacity is very small and has remained so. As a man of God, you are trusting God to expand your ministry. God loves you, but he loves those you want him to send you to you. And because your capacity is small, you will not be able to do much. Are we together? One more time, cry. Greater capacity. Enlarged capacity in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray the second prayer point. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, Acts 13 verse 2, the Bible says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul, for the work I have called them into. If they did not submit themselves to prayer and fasting, they would not even know that there was an assignment for them. Hallelujah. We are praying that God would download the prophetic blueprint for the next season of your life. 
are we together listen to me delay is related to confusion the moment there is clarity there is speed are we together if you are driving somewhere and you are not sure where to turn to the first thing you do is reduce your speed so that you do not pass the place I say it again, delay is related to confusion. You're going to pray, Lord, the prophetic blueprint for my life in this season, I receive it by the Spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. The prophetic blueprint for the next level of my life. The prophetic blueprint. The prophetic blueprint for the next level of your ministry, the next level of your impact. Yesterday's instruction may not suffice for today. Your ears must be inclined to hear what he's saying today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Is that in your Bible? It says, for the spirit searcheth all things. How many things does he search? All things. He does not search some. He has the exclusive ability to search the mind of the father, even the deep things of God the deep things of God. You are going to pray, Holy Spirit, bring to my life the detail for the next level of my life. Bring to my life the details. What do I need to do? Where do I need to go to? Who do I need to meet for the next level of my destiny to be opened? Go ahead and pray. Confusion recycles pain. Action in ignorance will only multiply your pain and waste your energy. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. It said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Is someone praying? The prophetic blueprint for the next level of my life for the next level of my life the prophetic blueprint for the next level of my business for in Jesus mighty name we pray it is dangerous for a new season to come upon you and then you do not know how to respond to it the bible is full of men and women who excelled within their current seasons but they did not know how to navigate the next season an example of such persons was the man called gehazi gehazi was a great man who served sincerely perhaps he would have been the one to receive elisha's mantle but he did not know that the season that was coming upon him demanded that he would have to conquer his love for money and to follow the prophet carefully and because of a morsel of meat he destroyed himself another person who made that mistake as you read in the bible was the context between jacob and esau that he sold his birthright for a pottage of soup of stew hallelujah it's important that we discern seasons like the sons of Issachar and that we know what to do per season. Help us tonight, O oh God, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please be seated. 
You're welcome to the presence of God. Welcome to Koinonia. We welcome all who are connected online. The Lord will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 3, chapter 2, from verse 3 and 4. First Timothy 2, 3 and 4. The Bible says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Please keep that scripture there. The Bible says that God has a burning desire in his heart for all men. And that desire is number one, that all men be saved. It is a desire very clearly written in scripture that God will have all men to be saved. That means whoever participates in making contributions towards the salvation of men is satisfying a desire and a longing in the heart of God who will have all men to be saved. That is on one hand. And then for those who are now saved to come unto the knowledge of the truth. There are people who are saved, but in ignorance, they will not do much, not for themselves, not for the kingdom. I have taught you that this kingdom is a kingdom that operates on the strength of light, the strength of knowledge. You can be saved. Salvation opens you up to the vast potentials that are captured in this Zoe life. But walking in the experience of it is knowledge dependent. Hallelujah. So, potentially speaking, the life we have received is a multifaceted um, expression of all the possibilities that are in Christ. But they will never find expression in my life and your life except and unless we have the requisite level of knowledge. And you see, knowledge in this kingdom is not freelanced. It has to be methodical. It has to be constructive. Are we together? Part knowledge here, another part here, a little, you know, misguided information here will not add up to an excelling life. You need to submit yourself to the whole counsel of God. That line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, you are learning the ways of God until you become mighty like the men of David. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Is someone shouting a louder amen? amen. And one of the reasons why we were given the Holy Ghost is to help us the Holy Spirit is our guarantee that we can step into the fullness of the knowledge it takes to reveal Jesus through our lives and to excel. 1 Corinthians 2, we read verse 9 and 10. Let's look at 11 and 12. The Bible says, verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? It says, Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Let's read verse 12 together. One to read. It says, Now we have received, uh -huh, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So one of the major assignments of the Holy Spirit is to come to us and become to us the revealer of the ways of God, the revealer of the mysteries of the kingdom, the revealer of the secrets of God, the revealer of the path that leads to an excelling life, a life of victory here and now. You can waste the ministry of the Spirit by just believing He's in your life just to make you feel spiritual and not maximize the potential. Most people are underutilizing the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They will tell you they are filled with the Holy Ghost. They will pray in tongues, but their lives are surrounded by all kinds of foolish decisions and it is clear that the Holy Spirit has no hand in that kind of life of decadence and perpetual decline. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, He truly makes you a winner. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? 
you can give me a phone or you can even give me some money and I can sit back there and not maximize those privileges either because of ignorance or whatever it is. Now, that does not stop the fact that you gave me something that has the potential to bless, to lift. But whether I can use it to my advantage or not is a different thing altogether. So most people have received the Holy Spirit and we just end at the realm of feeling spiritual. Oh, I have the Holy Ghost. I can even pray in tongues to prove it. But we cannot see the benefit of his person in your life. There should be a remarkable difference. Please look up. The former you, the current you, and the future you should be clearly different as proof that the Holy Spirit has come to assist you. Are we together? Did the Bible not say two are better than one? That means my life alone without his assistance, now that he has come into my life, your life should not be the same at all. Our precious people sang it very powerfully. The Holy Spirit is that engracing that comes from God. The added advantage, the advantage. When he comes upon your life, your background no longer matters. When he comes upon your life, the limitations past do not matter again. I hope you believe this. This is very powerful. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, your life becomes a living epistle. Your life becomes a discussion unto the glory of God. That when people look at your life, they know that a normal human being unassisted by heaven, unassisted by the realm of the spirit, cannot produce this kind of result. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and verse 1, and he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, verse 2 says, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are results that cannot happen just by the strength of the flesh. Hallelujah. I'm praying for you that from tonight, the excellency of your results will clearly show that God is with you. Yeah. But not just that he's with you, that he's truly the one leading you. Yeah. It is all right for people to not believe you when you say God is leading me. But the end of your journey will show that he's the one who led you to Abuja. That he's the one who brought you here. That he's the one helping you understand his ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. And up front, let me encourage someone. Look up, please. It takes time for the excellency of the spirit life to manifest. Be patient. God is walking. We live in a world where we want to rush everything, you know. And you just want, I'm born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. What do I need to know? I want to start seeing results immediately. Be patient. Only a foolish farmer will go and put a seed on the ground are we together and by the next day he goes back there and he's angry at the farm i thought you are supposed to be a you know well fertilized farm you be patient sometimes you just need to do what you are doing you don't need to do anything new just be consistent it says let us not be weary in well doing for we will reap in due season if we faint not we will reap in due season Yours is to continue the prayer, continue the word study, continue submitting yourself to growth. One day, like a baby transiting into a teenager, there are things that begin to happen in your life that tells you that a season is changing. Am I right on that? Yes. What does a baby do to become a higher version of itself? What does a young boy do to become a teenager? What does a teenager do to become an adolescent? What does an adolescent do to become an adult? What does an adult do to become an elderly person? That is the law of growth. Consistency is what is common to all of them. If a baby takes one drum of breast milk, it does not turn him into an adult. He just becomes a healthy baby. He will still be a baby. If an adult starves himself to death, he does not become a child. 
he only becomes a malnourished adult. There are certain things that subscribe to the law of process. Yours is to continue. It may not look like it, but the Bible says, now are we the sons of God. It says it does not yet appear. From that one room, keep loving Jesus. From that one room, keep serving Jesus. From that one room, let your mind keep dreaming with the Spirit. Sooner or later, you will turn back and look for your former self and not find it again. Did the Bible not say, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. So be patient with yourself. Don't allow the devil who is the master of the sense realm to make you feel this pursuit of God, this investment in prayer, this investment in the study of God's word, this giving, all of this practices they don't seem to be yielding result till now i do not have a job till now i do not have this and that make up your mind that you will weary that voice of doubt and remain consistent knowing that god has sworn by the oath and the promise that by these two immutable things hear me it is impossible for god to lie and the way the realm of the spirit works is even 24 hours to your new season, it will not look like it. One more bath to turn a man to become a complete man, he was still looking leprous. One more night for the prisoner to become a prime minister, he was still looking like an ordinary person. The same way someone is seated here. Who knows, maybe this is your last night in that realm. Who knows, maybe this is your last night in that dimension. You will wake up and through the law of consistency, you would have evolved to a dimension of you that will become a marvel to the world. I speak it to someone in the name of Jesus Christ. The staying power, the grace to stay and to remain until you evolve. The grace to stay and remain until the word works in your life. The grace to stay and remain. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It is not in starting, even failure start. It is champions that remain until they finish. When you watch a marathon, all kinds of people are there ready to start. Even those who already know, they will not finish. And once they shoot the gun or blow the whistle, everyone is running. And some are just whiling away time whereas you can see some people you can almost suspect that they will be the winners because their determination is so palpable you will know that from the start they were prepared to weary tiredness until they got to the finish line may you be that kind of person <laughs> refuse to give up every time you are tempted to give up listen remember all those who are connected to your destiny Every time you're tempted to give up, remember the fact that God is counting on you to be the person who will end certain circles and let that motivate you and support your staying power to remain until you emerge. But one guarantee I can give you by the integrity of scripture is that nobody who submits himself to the ministry of the word, the ministry of prayer, you are methodically taught the ways of God alongside the engracing that empowers you to walk in keeping with what you know. It is impossible to remain a failure. We are not the first to do this. This is not an invention. It's a relay. Others ran this race with excellence and they handed the baton to us. The Bible says, listen carefully, to follow them who through faith and patience. You're not the first to rise from failure to success. You're not the first to receive restoration from a, you know, whatever it is. Everything that is happening to you now is only a repetition of something that has happened before. The Bible says the thing that was is the thing that it is, that is and is that which is to come. We learn scripture because we find our experiences in scripture alongside the pathway that leads us to victory. It says, now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph hallelujah are you blessed already journey with me tonight 
Tonight, we are going to the school of power. There are things that God wants to open our eyes to see. There are things that God wants to plant within our spirits. And I owe you to teach you these mysteries, the mysteries that control the understanding and the administration of spiritual power. Now, respectfully speaking, there are so many people who talk about power. People have written books about power. But it's very clear that there are very few people, very few people who genuinely understand power alongside the systems of administering it. I'm hoping that this teaching tonight will truly bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me set two foundations very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Two foundations very, very quickly. Number one, please write. The first foundation that I want you to get tonight is that God is the all-powerful God. This looks very simple, but please write. God is the all-powerful God. We're in the school of power tonight. God is the all-powerful God. Not one of them, not the most senior. God is the all-powerful God. He's called El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. It's a picture of one who has infinite ability and supplies. Are we together? Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. So the first foundation tonight is that God is the all-powerful God. It says, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Please say, by thy great power. It took great power to make the heavens and the earth. It was not just suggestion. It was beyond sincerity. If he was God indeed, he had to prove it by exerting great power to make the heavens and the earth. It says, and thy outstretched arm, and there is nothing on account of your track record. We know for a shorty that there is nothing too hard for thee. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Second scripture to buttress on this point is Psalm 62 and verse 11. Popular scripture here. Psalm 62 and 11. God had spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Someone say, power belongs to God. Power. One more time. Say, power belongs to God. So every time you see the manifestation of power across this realm, across the earth, it tells you that there is a God factor that has been introduced within that system. Even if manipulated, the Bible testifies that power resides with God. That everywhere you see the manifestation of power, no matter what name you call it, that that power came from God, whether it was manipulated, as you'll be learning tonight, all power belongs to God. God does not depend on any deity to get power. If he did, he would no longer be God. Are we together? One of, there are three attributes for your knowledge. There are three attributes of God that he did not share with man. Please look up. The Bible tells us that we were made in the image and the likeness of God. What does that mean? The image of God is a spiritual, the spiritual quality. The image of God made in Christ. Are we together? the glory of God but the likeness of God means his functionality we were made to function like God two hands one head are we together now yes and we function by speaking we function by doing so the Bible says man was made in the image of God and in the likeness of God this is very important God gave man everything the Bible lets us know that we are partakers of his divine nature do you believe that however there are three attributes of God he did not share with man. Listen carefully. There are three attributes of God that he did not share with man. These are the attributes that brand God and put him in a class all by himself. For your knowledge, just write it down quickly. Number one is called his omnipotence or omnipresence. Let's start with omnipresence omnipresence what does that mean his ability to be everywhere at the same time 
The Bible calls him Alpha, it calls him Omega. The expression and was not in the original translation. Alpha, Omega. What does that mean? It means that God does not need to move forward to know what the end will be. Are we together? There is no time lag with him. He's at the beginning and at the same time he's at the end. This is an attribute of God he did not share with man. The psalmist said it this way, where can I hide from your presence? Omnipresence. God is everywhere at the same time. None of us, no matter how, even if we contend, we get into that Philip dimension, we cannot be everywhere at the same time. Even Jesus, when he wore a mortal body and became flesh, he could not be everywhere at the same time. Jesus would say, let us go to the other side. That means let's leave where we are now and then move to the other side when he was going to Gadara. But God can be everywhere at the same time. It's interesting that he's here in this place and he's there with someone in a church somewhere, in a crusade ground somewhere, and it's the same God. Number two, he's omnipresence or omnipotence omnipotence that is the second attribute of god what does it mean potent means powerful all powerful god does not outsource power from the external environment god does not outsource power i hope you know that every other being every other entity on earth listen the law of power also goes hand in glove with the law of authority that means anybody you see manifesting power must be able to show where he received it from because the only person who does not receive power is god are we together now but every other being ye shall receive power are we together now this is very important when it comes to God, he did not outsource his power. If he outsourced his power, then whoever or whatever gave him that power must then be the God. Omnipotent. Number three is omniscient. Omniscient. Others will say omniscience. Omniscient. That means all-knowing. These are the three attributes of God he did not share with man. Omniscient. God knows all things. God is not learning. He does not learn. When Jesus came and walked in the flesh, he had to learn the law. But God in his capacity as God does not learn. God does not have anybody who teaches him or grants him mentorship. He knows all things. Are we together? We have to depend on the Holy Spirit for our knowledge. But God is all-knowing. 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 We see in part, the Bible says, and we prophesy in part. But we're talking about the God that knows everything. If he is everywhere, then it makes sense for him to know everything. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. All right, so back to our foundation. We're laying a very strong foundation that God is the all-powerful God. This is very important. Find a way of believing that in truth, whether you have seen his power manifest to the degree that satisfies you or not, believe by faith that God is all-powerful. Number two, the second foundation that I want to lay tonight in our discussion is that God desires for his power to be revealed in the lives of his people. God desires for his power to be revealed in the lives of his people. He's not only the all-powerful God, but there is a yearning in his heart that his power be made manifest in the midst of his people. Psalm 107 verse 21. Psalm 107 verse 21. Here's what it says. All oh, that men would praise the Lord, it says, for his goodness and for his wonderful works. Where? To the children of men. Men will praise him because they have seen in experience his goodness and his wonderful works. In Zephaniah 3.17, 
Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. It says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Not just the Lord seated on a throne. Are we together? The Lord who has come to be made manifest is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. Hallelujah. So these two foundations are very important for our discussion tonight. That God is the all-powerful God. But then that number two, God desires his power to be revealed in my life and your life. If you can settle on that, then you'll be ready to learn everything as far as the dynamics of power is concerned. If you still have a restraint in your thinking, whether or not God wants his power to be made manifest, chances are excellent that you will not be open to receive. Are we together? What is power? Let me define for you the power of God. In fact, power generally. Please write. I have two definitions here or three that I want you to please put down. Number one, power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes. Power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes the ability to influence outcomes is called power the ability to do the ability to influence outcomes all kinds of outcomes human outcomes circumstantial outcomes spiritual outcomes financial outcomes the ability to do and the ability to influence outcomes is called power do you understand that definition? That means if someone comes here now who say for instance is sick and I can exert an energy and influence upon that person and that person instantly becomes healed. There was an agency, am I right on that? That functioned like a drug into that person's body that corrected that anomaly we call that power everywhere you see outcomes influenced to line up with the will of god and to line up in such a way that it it makes the saints to be victorious that there right there is the manifestation of the power of god what turns a man from poverty to wealth is power. What turns a man from defeat to an excelling life is power. What subdues principalities, witches and wizards and causes an individual regardless your background to emerge is power. One more time, power is defined as the ability or capacity to do the ability to influence outcomes. Number two, I define power as the force that compels compliance. Power is the force that compels compliance. Very powerful definition. The force that compels compliance. You can put in bracket obedience. The force that compels compliance. The capacity to influence outcomes and the force that compels compliance that means everywhere power is available you know the presence of power by the manifestation of obedience are we together everywhere there is power there must be obedience to the will and the dictates of the person manifesting the power when you see lawlessness and you see disobedience, it's a sign that power is not present or that power is not being executed accurately. Am I right on that? Yes, sir. Write this down, please. Every result, and listen carefully, every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. Every result prosperity increase 
great children, a great marital destiny, great ministry, abundance increase spiritually. Every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. Every result. When you see results in the kingdom, in any variety of its expressions, I am telling you that at the back of every result is the manifestation of power. Now, whether that power is positively used or not is something else we are going to discuss. Watch this. That also includes a herbalist who will tell someone, come, I want to prosper you. Go and bring a goat. Go and bring a chicken. And it does some incantations and mixes all of those things and tells the person, go. And by the time he gets to the office, they promote him twice in one month. And you are wondering, that there is power being manifested. Whether it glorifies God or not is something else we're going to discuss. But we're settling the fact that every time you see the ability to manipulate outcomes to your advantage, it is called power. I hope you know that the hallmark of dominion is not knowledge. The hallmark of dominion is power. What you know is useless if it cannot manipulate the outcomes of your destiny. Please listen carefully. The hallmark of dominion is not knowledge. The hallmark of dominion is power. If you are walking in dominion in truth, it must be demonstrated by your ability to select the possibilities that come into your life or the possibilities that remain in your life. If you do not have that ability to edit the happenings in your life and only allow those that are consistent with the will of God to find expression, what is missing in your life is power. Is someone learning already? The ability to compel compliance. I said every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. No wonder we look at people and we say this man is powerful. When you see a wealthy man who is excelling, you say, wow, this man is so powerful. Whenever you see men and women manifest um, extra supernatural or extra human abilities accomplish certain feats we usually will attribute them more to power than even it is to knowledge hallelujah i don't know how i stumbled across a video one time online where i think it's they slap themselves that's the the, the and it, it caught my attention and i said what in the world is going on here I mean, literally a competition with people who come and then this guy will slap this guy. If you are able to stand that slap, then you, now your turn, they slap you back. I, I, I don't, of course, everybody has a right to whatever it is that they believe, but I found that amusing. And then one of the guys who was purported to be a world champion, it was now his turn to slap the other guy. And with the determination of a winner, he slapped that gentleman and I think the person passed out or, or collapsed. And I said, that right there is power. <laughs> to manipulate an outcome to reflect your desire. Are we together? Yes. Many believers are stranded in life and destiny because they do not understand the dynamics of power. They do not understand how to access it. They, did not, they do not even understand how it works, nor how to release and to dispense it. And listen to me, your Christian experience will be in a sorry state if you do not understand the dynamics of power and how to make it manifest. Respectfully speaking, there are preachers struggling in ministry because they do not understand how the power of God works. There are individuals struggling across several areas of their lives because they do not know that the power of God is the privilege of all the saints. Look at me, please. When we talk of power, especially in the kingdom, I think subliminally we have been programmed to imagine that the power of God is the exclusive reserve for preachers, 
apostles and prophets so when we say power immediately your mind goes to an apostle some prophet some evangelist some teacher and then once you do not feel called into the fivefold ministry we usually close our hearts to power and would gladly have to depend on the vessels we perceive to have power for us to partake of that power but I am telling you that when it has to do with the power of God he desires that all men Power is in several degrees. Power is in several dimensions. We are not necessarily discussing that tonight. Are we together now? But just for you to know that once you are in Christ, it is your heritage and your privilege as, as a result of that which Christ has done to access, to walk in, and to manifest in experience the power of God. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Psalm 66 and verse 3. He says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Submission is a product of power. When it has to do with elemental forces, when it has to do with the realm of the spirit, many people have heard the saying that the only language Satan understands is power. I believe that it takes the power of God to subdue principalities and powers. It takes the power of God to manipulate circumstances and situations to reflect glory, to reflect grace. This is our mandate to bring everything to the obedience of Christ in experience. Hallelujah. Did the Bible not say it in um, that should be Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent it says that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God chapter 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them and all of this will require power more than desire you will require power please listen to me my brother my sister it will take power to rewrite the narratives the negative narratives in your family it will take power to force your portion to come to you and to remain with you the bible says strong men return retain wealth wise men bring wealth but strong men retain wealth are we together now it takes power to compel your portion right from the days of John up until now the kingdom suffered violence it says the violence shall take it by force there is nothing that God desires to come into your life that will just come in cheaply Satan will not allow that he is a master at rebellion he is a stubborn spirit stubborn from the foundations of the earth and he will not allow anything including your portion to come to you without a contest not even salvation came at a platter of gold to us the recipients we got it freely but to him who paid that price he paid the price with his blood his reputation even his death if your life is going to change it will take power man of God if you must rise in ministry and excel it is going to take power it takes power to stop the devil from destroying your children and planting all kinds of negative and demonic seeds in them. It takes power. It takes power to ward off the antagonisms of men that plague our world and still continue to excel in spite of Satan, in spite of negative situations and circumstances. Someone say power. Let the devil hear you. Power. Now, pay attention. Very briefly, let me just share. This is not, there is something I want us to touch tonight before we pray. But the power of God, listen carefully. The power of God operates exclusively by faith. The power of God at work in the believer operates exclusively by faith that means power is faith dependent now for a long time um, 
I think across the body of Christ, there seems to have been an age-long confusion as to the role of the power of God versus the role of faith. And so erroneously, we've had people who are supposedly the power people, especially the charismatics. We are the people of power, the people of the spirit, and they downplay the place of faith. And then respectfully speaking, we have those who believe in faith as it were, and do not seem to place any regard to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is nowhere in the Bible where believers are taught to dichotomize faith and then the ministry of the Holy Spirit or to choose one against the other. It is an unfortunate miscommunication of women and women of God. And I know that everybody is doing their best, but speaking from a standpoint of scriptural accuracy, listen, faith and the power of God work hand in glove. The assignment of faith is to connect you to the power of God. Are we together? When you say faith has brought you the victory, you are right. But the dynamics of that operation is that your faith connects you to the power of God. It is the power of God that is the force that actually produces the results. Are we together? Yeah. Imagine with me for a moment that you bought a nice gadget, say a fridge. Please look up. Walk with your minds now. So we have here a fridge. Are we together? Beautiful fridge that you bought from whatever, you know, where appliances are bought. And you have this fridge. It has the potential to cool anything. Your soft drinks, whatever you put in there. But did you know that there is usually a socket on your wall? Am I, am I, am I right on that? That is connected to the power holding company. Now, that fridge can remain there for eternity, even though brand new. You will never be able to experience the potential. I hope you know that if you just put your tomato or your drinks there, it's going to rot and spoil there. Does that mean the fridge cannot cool? It can, but now it's not connected to power. Does that even mean that the power holding company has not released power? There's power, but your connection. Are we together? And sometimes, how many of you know that the wire from your fridge to the wall may be too short sometimes. Am I right on that? And you may need to add to the wire to elongate it. Your assignment is that by all means, it gets to connect there. That long wire you see is what we call faith. The assignment of faith is to be a conduit for the power of God to flow. So when you say the wire is the reason why the fridge is on, you are not wrong, but classically speaking, there is power that flows through that wire. Am I right on that? Electricity, you call it. That is what really powers it. So as much as the power is available to power your fridge, if the wire that is connected is too small, you will need to elongate it. This is the dynamics of faith and the power of God. So imagine someone who says, I don't need the power in the wall there. All I need is to have a long wire. You can go and buy, you know, measure wires and buy it and even hang some on your shoulder. Now, there's no doubt that you have a lot of wire, but will the fridge still be cold? Then assume the person who keeps jumping and using a tester to say, look, I can guarantee you there is light there. The power holding company has released light. Will the fridge still be on? There has to be a synergy. Am I right on that? A combination between the socket and the power that is released there and then your wire that connects you. So faith connects you to the power of God, but it is the power of God that actually brings the results. Are you learning now? So if all you have is power, congratulations, but you are about to watch from a distance and be frustrated while you watch because it will take faith to transport that reality. So when the Bible says things like, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, he's talking about your conviction that now has given you room to take action and in taking your action you have now committed the power of God to flow hallelujah but it's important for you to know that the administration of the power of God is faith dependent what does that mean that means that administering the power of God is a product of conviction and obedience you're not going to independently or arbitrarily manifest genuine power. 
All kinds of power, even manipulated power, depends on conviction and obedience. If you go on, for instance, not, not to praise or glorify the devil, but just because of our discussion. Imagine with me that you were not saved back in our days, traditional practices, and you now went to some herbalist somewhere and said, Sir, I want my crops to produce maximally this year. Watch what you will do. He will say, so, so this is what you want? Yes, sir. I want to have a bumper harvest. He will laugh because that possibility exists in the spirit. Are we together? And then, based on his experience or his level of consecration or his ability to access familiar spirit, he will come up with a formula that controls what you are looking for. Am I, am I, am I right on that? When he consults with those mediums, they will now tell him what must be combined to produce that outcome you're looking for. So he will now give you the list. Go and bring a black goat, for instance. Go and bring one bag of beans or whatever it is. Go and bring this and that. Add 50,000 naira to it and then write the names of everybody who will be farming there and now you may not know what you are doing remember all you want is the outcome but number one your conviction number two your obedience you will now go and get all those things and bring it and say i've now brought it and he will conjure those things and say a lot of nonsense and gibberish that you don't care about while he's saying and once he will mix all of that thing he may give you something or he may say go and to your shock and wonder you will be surprised that your farm will start obeying you in a certain way. Hmm. Am I right on that? Yes. Bumper harvest. And people will ask you, how did you do it? Usually will not, you will not tell them where they were. You will just say, it's just God's grace. But you and the herbalist and even God, you know that a transaction happened. Now listen carefully. Your eyes will be open to something I will teach you now. That is corrupted power, manipulated power. God is not glorified through the process because it is minus. It does not reveal and glorify Jesus. However, that process you see is a manipulation of spiritual laws. It is not an invention of Satan. Familiar spirits demand fraternity to reveal certain secrets to men by reason of their advantage being spirits. You are going to be learning. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. I do not know any herbalist, any spiritist or anybody, at least we see from Nigerian film, that you come and meet and say Baba or whoever, because they are both male and female, whether Baba or Mama, whichever one, I need help, look up please. Who will just tell you, you need help, go, it is done. Even if it's your biological father, he will demand action. There is something you must do. And based on the gravity of what you want to be done, that is the level of demand. There are sometimes they may say, are you ready to give your wife? Ah, my wife. But I'm desperate for this position. Say, well, we have consulted with the realm of the spirit and we have found out that this is the condition connected to this. And there are people sadly who would do it. That even includes your soul. The Bible is clear as to the fact that there is a place on earth where men can do business even with their soul and gain the world as a result. And the Bible, he knows that it will work. You gain the whole world by losing your soul. And the result will work. You are gaining the whole world, but will not see your soul that has been lost, unfortunately. Hmm. Everywhere the power of God is dispensed, there must be a demand for obedience. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Everywhere you see Jesus manifesting power, especially in the midst of men, there will always be an action. There will always be, he would ask them a question, do you believe I'm able to do this? If you believe, stand up, pick up your bed and walk. Or what should I do for you? 
You would think that as powerful and compassionate as he was and he is, he shouldn't even ask them any question. But there was always a demand because the power of God is faith dependent. Please listen carefully. The power of God is faith dependent. The power that lifts you is faith dependent. The power that attracts possibilities to your life is faith dependent. The power that will raise your children to become excellent people is faith dependent. The power that will grow that church to bring glory to God is faith dependent. And if you do not understand faith, then you cannot understand the power of God. Is someone learning? Now, I want to teach you three levels. There are three levels at which the power of God is accessed and released. Three levels. The power of God is accessed at three levels. And all those levels have the dimensions of possibilities that they bring. I want you to please lend me your attention now. We're in the school of power. Is someone learning? Three levels. Number one, write this down and please do not forget it. The first level is the power that has been programmed into laws and principles. Please write. There is a dimension of the power of God that has been programmed into laws, L-A-W-S, and principles. The first dimension of the power of God that all men, even the saints can access is the power of God that has been programmed into laws and principles. An instance is in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. God made a very profound pronouncement there and he connected it to the earth. Look up please. It says, while the earth remaineth. Is that in your Bible? It says, seed time and harvest everybody say laws cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease have you seen any one of these seas on earth sometimes the seasons will be so prolonged you would think the other one will not come but a dimension of God's power was invested into laws and principles and look at me the nature of this dimension of power is that it functions based on understanding, not relationship. You do not need a relationship with God to access this dimension of his power. That is the reason why an individual can reject God as God, but walk in keeping through understanding to these laws and access that dimension of power. This is a dimension of power that unbelievers have used to build conglomerates. Unbelievers have used the law of value has the power of God attached to it. The law of relationships has the power of God attached to it. It says he that wants friends must show himself friendly. Whether that person is a believer or not, the moment you are friendly, you, that dimension of God's power is kicked into your favor. Watch this. If a terrorist decides to maximize the rainy season to farm, will it bring crops for him? I hope you know that earth that produced for him is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. And yet that man as evil hearted as he is or they are will still farm because the power of God has been invested into the law of seed time and harvest. They will still have a bumper harvest. Please listen carefully, believers. Apostle, I desire power in my life. I want to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I don't know why I'm not seeing the power of God. You may have neglected this dimension of the power of God. Why are unbelievers striving and excelling? They don't love Jesus, yet we see them excel because they have mastered this dimension of accessing the power of God. They may not acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. In fact, they may deny him to his face, but that does not mean the laws will stop working. If you understand me, say amen. Let me, just, you, you don't need to write, just look at me. Let me list for you a few laws that have the power of God behind them. Are you ready? 
you can just listen number one is the law of diligence the bible says the diligent hand shall be made rich no matter who on earth the moment you subscribe to diligence there is a great future for you under normal circumstances if you are diligent and you do not prosper it takes demons to interrupt that law but under normal circumstances diligence should and productivity is connected to wealth and increase number two blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy that every time you show mercy you are programming that reality whether you are born again or not based on the laws of seasons and the laws of time and chance eventually that harvest will come to you herein lies the answer to the age-long question why is it that if God is the God of the universe there are believers who are suffering there are children who are crying across the globe how can a loving God be seated upon his throne and is watching children in Africa die whereas there are people who are renting jets and renting a lot of things and wasting their lives and it looks like God is watching them listen to me God gave every man a will and not even him will violate that will at the expense of your eternal destiny he allows you to choose whether you want to hand your life to him or not and if you reject him he will respect your decision even when satan rebelled against him in heaven he respected his decision unfortunately every decision comes with consequences it was not that god got up and decided to punish satan the judgment of Satan was the consequence of rebellion. Are we together? This is very powerful. So when we see people cry and die and scrounge around in our society, is a violation largely. Now, demon spirits have taken advantage of that state, but they are taking advantage of that state because they already know that there is a dimension of the power of God invested in principles. Watch this. So a gentleman gets up one day, I'm not talking of someone who is born again. We're believers, but I hope you understand why I'm teaching you this way. So a gentleman who is not even saved just gets up and reads a book. Maybe a book written by Bill Gates or a book written by any great man and makes up his mind that I'm going to take my destiny by my hands. Are we together? Now, this is somebody who is not saved and makes up his mind to walk with the things that are written there. He begins to change his attitude. He begins to subject himself through all kinds of things. He subscribes to mentorship. Are we together? Educate his mind. You will find out that the reality of that man begins to change. Remember our definition of power? The ability to control and to manipulate your outcome. The once poor and wretched gentleman suddenly begins to change. His life is changing. This gentleman has refused to accept the person of Jesus, but he has adopted the principles of Jesus. They may not acknowledge him as the author of those principles, but please, I want you to believe me that if you ever see any manifestation of power, it is because there's a dimension of God's power programmed in laws. Now, people call it all kinds of names some call it the laws of the universe some call it all kinds of laws some attribute it to mother nature unfortunately but we who are of the faith we know that's why i laid that foundation i have spoken once and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the lord so if i plant corn and i see that corn growing i don't congratulate the universe for giving me corn i give glory to jesus because i know that he's the one who empowered it but if i'm an unbeliever i can give that glory to my conscience or some kind of cosmic power this is the advantage that believers have when believers practice the laws of the kingdom the advantage is that we practice it as submitting to jesus and eventually the glory returns to jesus are you learning now but you neglect laws and principles and you find out that you have neglected a whole dimension of God's power you may never experience it in your life could it be that someone seated now you are born again you are saved but you have ignored obedience to principles and to laws spiritual laws laws that have been taught scriptural laws there are laws of growth there are laws of leadership 
there are laws of influence there are laws of multiplication there are laws of restoration which of them do you not know which of them do you know my assignment is by the ministry of the Holy Spirit to expose you to these laws of the kingdom. I call them mysteries. Matthew 13 and 11. Jesus himself was teaching the disciples and he said the kingdom was shrouded in mysteries. He says because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Watch a display of spiritual laws. Moses comes to stand in front of Pharaoh and he throws his rod and that rod becomes a serpent. Look at me. And then Janus and Jembes, they never called the name of Jesus, yet they threw their rod and it became that. Now I'm not promoting evil, never will I do so. It is for the purpose of my discussion with you. How many of you know that in our various villages, in our various market squares, and even some have been so sophisticated, there are people who are acclaimed magicians. Am I right on that? And they, they bastardize spiritual laws. You sit down, sometimes you, you, you almost have to shut yourself from watching those things because they, the things that you seem to be craving to see manifest, they play child play they manipulate the laws of the spirit it only reveals to you the possibilities that are there that are yet to be tapped all power belongs to God so I lay hands on a sick person and says in the name of Jesus stand up from this wheelchair and the person stands up and you are clapping yet another person is in a village somewhere telling someone look I, I cannot stand up and they say don't worry we'll put a particular leaf we'll chant something and then the person gets up now two of us seem to have done the same thing the difference is that Jesus is glorified in one and Satan is glorified in the other are you getting what I'm saying now the believer listen to me there are many many formulas and there are many routes to accessing power but the believer for you to be a believer indeed you must be constrained to only the method that scripture provides that does not mean there are no other routes but the believer has a mandate please get this are we together now the difference between witchcraft and satanism and spiritism is that you are walking out of the confines of the provisions that scripture allows the believer is not just interested in outcomes you are interested in making sure that what you practice is in keeping with the principles that are revealed in scripture failure to know this is what has led many people into extra biblical practices and into all kinds of satanic things because when you now know that after all every law is God's law so let me manipulate it I can go and kill a goat and spill the blood after all the concept of blood was introduced by God himself not even Satan I can now manipulate you but when you know that as a believer part of what makes you a believer is your total submission to the authority of Scripture your total submission to the ways of God so if you advertise a strategy for me, even if it is producing results and is inconsistent with scripture, my being a believer mandates that I reject it. Are we together? Is someone learning now? If, you, if you're understanding me, say amen. amen. Hmm. Why will I not just go and call some herbalist somewhere and say we're all co-laborers, we're colleagues in this business. The most important thing is we're getting people healed. Why will I not do that? Because the results may seem to have a similitude, it may look like there's result, but our convictions, the government that we pledge our authority to, are we together? And the modus operandi, the pathway we follow are very different. I will not hate them, but I'm not going to fraternize with them because I do not believe that. Why should Paul in Acts chapter 16 cast a demon out of a damn cell who was using it to prophesy to people? If it was just about the prophetic, he rebuked her because in doing that, Satan was manipulating that thing. Are we together now? And he was using it to deceive many people and to bring gains to many people. If someone is learning, say amen. amen. So, 
the first level at which the power of God is accessed is the power programmed into laws and principles. Please hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you? Do you know why laws are very predictable? Watch this. Some of you, especially our international guests, you took a flight from your various nations to come here. Most likely the person who flew you was not a believer. Yet that whole aircraft and the system worked in keeping with the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics is not a scientific law. It is a spiritual law that was discovered and used by science. Are we together now? What you call scientific laws, go and ask the inventors of those laws. Is it the laws of mechanics? Is it the law of whatever it is? Everything you call a law today, we just say they are spiritual laws and natural laws simply because of the dimensions where they find expression. But in truth, there are only spiritual laws. All laws are spiritual because they have the power of God back in them. Are we together? So, men like Sir Isaac Newton, in their study of mechanics, they, start, they stumbled across several laws and put their postulations together. Are we together? There were many other scientists, Michael Faraday, look at this. Today we are enjoying and preaching the gospel because of a concept called electricity. The Wright brothers, are we together now? Henry Ford, all of these people, the inventions in our world today are simply spiritual laws that have been tapped and have been converted into a way and a strategy that betters the life of people. That means... Even when no plane had flown in the air, the law of aerodynamics was still there. Only God knows how many other laws are there that we are yet to find. Once upon a time, listen, many of you remember, once upon a time, if you went to the bank, you could not transfer money from your branch to another branch. No. Not to talk of whoever believed that you can hold a phone and with your phone you can do transactions, you can talk to anybody across the world. Remember those days when rain falls and your nightel line cuts. You have to carry a ladder and start strolling around your community looking for which one a tree has fallen on now. To fix it so that your phone will come back. But right now with one dial, with one dial you can be talking to someone from anywhere across the globe. Those laws were always there. Just because we did not know them. The power of God remained dormant on that wise. Today we talk of AI and all these technological things. Look at how excited we are entering into it. Yet they have always been there. Please listen to me. If you understand what I'm telling you, your life will become phenomenal. You will now respect the laws of God. This organization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Even if it is practiced by a Christian, the moment you are disorganized in leadership, in ministry, as a person, there will never be growth with disorganization. Scatter your clothes and try to put it in a bag. You find out that it seems like it cannot enter. Iron them and arrange the same clothes. You will now be able to close the bag. Disorganization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Now, watch this. Why am I teaching you this? So that in wanting to see the power of God made manifest in your life, you will see that God was so determined that he invested his power in laws and principles. Wealth has a law. Kingdom wealth does not just work on laws alone. When you now bring kingdom, it is not only laws now. You have to bring in the will of God and the purposes of God. That's why there is a difference between wealth and kingdom wealth. There is a difference between influence and kingdom influence. Influence, you just need to work on the law of growth, result, productivity, leadership. But when you bring kingdom to it, you now have to submit to the will of God. Are we learning now? Look at the advancements we are making in medicine. Watch this. I hope you know that the same malaria that today, if someone said, I have fever or malaria, they say, oh, sorry, just stroll to a pharmacist there, talk with the pharmacist, and they will give you some drug. Nobody will lament. In fact, many people will not even pray. They will just say it's well. But the same malaria once upon a time on earth here, if you had it, it was as though you had HIV. Am I right? It was as though you had cancer. 
Yet there were laws that had these solutions. One day, scientists together stumbled across a combination that could sort out malaria so easily. Now, someone can even be doing his work and say, you know, I've had malaria. And you say, sorry. And you expect to see that person by next week. The power of laws. That means cancer that is killing people today. Listen carefully. That means <laughs> HIV that is killing people today. There is a supernatural dimension to it. But please, I want you to believe me that God who put his power in laws, there is every solution. It is the, this is where the assignment of the Holy Ghost comes. You will be learning how inventions happen. Invention is not brain work. Invention is a spirit assisting a man to find where these laws are alongside the combination. Go and ask inventors. They will tell you inventors are usually lonely people they alienate themselves from society it is that level of consecration that introduces them to spirits they may not acknowledge that i'm interacting with a spirit they will say a voice told me join this join that join this and boom something happens there were people from as far back as 1992 1993 who predicted the technological advancement of these days not by word of knowledge the progression of inventions and that happened by the assistance of spirits we are still coming to the other dimensions i am just telling you that watch this we are immersed in a myriad of spiritual laws waiting for us to understand the bible is the believers compendium of these laws that if you find out from this Bible, whoever knew that if someone is sick, you can play worship and play all of this and it can bless the person and it can be healed. Now medical science is telling us that even people who submit themselves to these atmospheres and these energies, that they have a, a, a chance of recovery than those who are allowed to be lonely and just sit back there. But this right from the beginning, these things were in the Bible. Now hear me. I know that people have used satanic and demonic laws to destroy. My goal is to help you know that these laws work because it is the power of God that is behind them. Forever until Jesus comes, when you get an airplane and the laws of aerodynamics is working well, when you move that plane, are we together now? It is going to go upon the air and we are going to travel and keep traveling, taking the gospel and taking whatever it is on the strength of that law. Many people have come here today. Look at your phone. Once upon a time, do you remember something called Nokia 3310? Remember how proud you were the day you bought it? You flaunted it, the same thing you are hiding today. When you are sorting your clothes and you find it, you quickly destroy You don't want to identify with it. Just, I'm just giving an example. But you can imagine that once upon a time, that was your pride. It would have been a dream to imagine that you can sit down and be watching Koinonia from your phone. Some of you, there are children who do not even know what a cafe is. How about typewriters? Semicolon LKJ, you were taught. And some of you got zero because you couldn't understand it. Where will I put my fingers? Hmm. Are we together? Yet, the laws that can make the globe to be at the, at the hand of a man, it's like this just here today you can do any kind of thing unimaginable things the laws believers please hear me before Jesus returns let me tell you one of the things that the Spirit of God is doing is he's opening the eyes of believers to see other laws combinations that will provide solutions to men I'm not just talking of supernatural solutions to the church because there are dimensions of supernatural solutions that the world will not receive so God brings it down through laws if I pluck a leaf now and I say eat it you call me a herbalist but if I consult with a pharmacist 
and turn that leaf into a pill and I say swallow it and cancer disappears you will call that an invention and you are right let me tell you there are many leaves that are for the healing of the nations you see some of our some of our aged parents in almost every village I know in Africa there's usually one old man who was trained to combine some leaves you just come and say my head is paining he said, just relax he will stroll around as if he's looking for something that is missing and bring all kinds of things pound them and say oh yeah you eat it and to your shock now it was demonic spirits that taught them but I'm teaching you that those laws demonic spirits do not invent power they only because they know that men unassisted are ignorant they will come to you and claim that they want to give you power your their own court from the deal is your loyalty to them then they will now show you certain spiritual combinations this is how witchcraft happens witchcraft is a manipulation of God's power that comes through a necessary alliance with Satan intended to ultimately give you a semblance of result while corrupting your desire for God but make no mistakes about it if your plane still flies if you still switch on your phone can you imagine that you send a text and it does not make a mistake to enter another number eight billion people there about on earth yet the person you are sending to it gets to his phone in a moment I'm holding right here a mic when I watch the videos of um, Catherine Kuhlman and all these people when this kind of invention was in its infancy you see them hanging they, they, they hang all kinds of things like a growth around their waist and carry it I mean you can imagine hanging something this heavy yet to them they were impressed because it was an invention and today to many people, I'm even living in a stone age holding this. Are we together? My question for you is what else is there? It would be foolishness to imagine that we have exhausted the laws that are there. What else is there? That someone can come up with something called YouTube. And in a moment, you can broadcast a meeting like this to the ends of the earth. And everybody is connecting. Once upon a time, if you did not have television, you will cry. You will save. Now your TV for some of you has been off for a long time. Because another kind of TV was given to you. What if you are given another that you do not have to hold again? Are you saying it will not happen? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos, Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.